Hi, everyone. Welcome to Reach Higher Riverside, where we share all stories happening in Riverside, California. My name is Priscilla Grijalva, and I work at the best high school in the world. the honor to go to the NACAC conference in Salt Lake City, Utah, and it was an honor to meet up with the Reach Hired team and interview Don Yu and Eric Waldo. Um, Eric Waldo was interviewed, and I asked what his favorite Michelle Obama moment was, and he shared a few, and a couple of them got cut out because of the voice memo, unfortunately, but I wanted you guys to know that a couple of moments he had shared were college signing day with Michelle Obama, the college rap song that Michelle Obama had done, and also the Beating the Odds Summit. So he had shared some of those um, great things that Michelle Obama had done. So I'm sorry that that got cut out and you guys missed it, but you'll be able to hear the rest of the interview. So be sure to listen in. At the NACAC conference, Catalina Cifuentes, the Riverside County Office of Education College and Career Executive Director, was honored with a national award for her great work in the city of Riverside, the county of Riverside, and pretty much the nation. She's the best. We wanted to share that audio with you so you could hear her interview and also her earning that award. So be sure to listen in. I'm Today I'm with uh, the Reach Hire team. I've got Don Yu and Eric Waldo. I'll let them introduce themselves. Hey, I'm Eric Waldo. I'm the Executive Director of the Reach Hire Initiative. Thanks for having us on. Hey, and I'm Don. I'm the Chief Operating Officer at Reach Hire. Can you tell everyone about the Reach Hire Initiative and the Better Make Room campaign and how it got started? I'll take a shot at starting for Reach Hire, and then maybe I'll let Don chime in on Better Make Room. Uh, Reach Hire was something that started out of the Obama White House. Mrs. Obama launched the campaign in 2014 on a college signing day in San Antonio, Texas. And the goal was that uh, Mrs. Obama wanted to take a shot at building a college-going culture and trying to get young people to get inspired about going to college, whether a two-year degree, a four-year degree, a community college, a certificate or credential. So we launched Reach Hire with the goal of Mrs. Obama as the school counselor-in-chief for the entire country. So we've been trying to build a movement, get young people to believe in themselves and the power of a higher education, and then connect them to resources that will help them actually uh, attain a college degree. And Better Make Room was launched about 18 months after Reach Hire, and Mrs. Obama wanted to have a separately branded campaign, something that spoke only to Generation Z. Reach Hire at that time, you know, we had spent a lot of time, Reach Hire had, had a lot of contact with school counselors, a lot of adults in the college access space, but Mrs. Obama thought that we really needed to meet students where they are and speak their language. Um, you know, for her, that meant we have to get really good at Instagram, at Twitter, at Snapchat. We have to text students, you know, and that has become our Up Next campaign, which Priscilla, you have um, um, been so great about making sure your students participate in that program. So, but Better Make Room is a offshoot of Reach Higher focused on engaging young people and getting them excited about going to and graduating from college. Yeah, thank you. We love all the resources you give our students. We're going to use up next in our school and our district and also across the county. The North Star goal is that by 2020, the United States will once again have the highest proportion of college graduates in the world. How can educators help with this goal, and how do you see Reach Hire evolving in the future? You know, Priscilla, I'd say number one, you know, the goal was definitely evolving because that was actually one of the first things that President Obama issued in 2009. His very first speech on education was to the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. And at that speech, he laid out the career, the Cradle's career goals for all of the work in education. And he said, we want to lead the world again by 2020. The reality is we're not going to hit the goal by 2020. Today, we're about 13th among industrialized nations. So, um, you know, we're making progress, but we still have a long way to go. So number one is I think we have to probably move the goal date. I don't think it's 2020 anymore. But what's really important is that this means that the work that we do, the work that you do as school counselors is so important. And I think that um, we have to continue to advocate for more resources for counselors, creating and building a college-going culture, and doing the things that we know will help us build demand among young people, but then really connect them to the resources that they need to be successful. So, you know, helping them navigate 
navigate the college process, getting them great teachers, getting them great counselors, making sure they're taking college prep material before they show up to college. There was a study this past week uh, called The Opportunity Myth from TNTP talking about the fact that for too often at our low-income schools, we're not even giving them material that's college preparatory. They're not, they're taking material that's not a grade level and they're not going to be ready even if we're passing them. So we're working really hard to make sure that we think about um, how our work evolves because I actually think we've got to keep on pushing towards that goal. How about you, John? Did you have anything to add to that? Yeah, absolutely. You know, about the 2020 goal, even though we've made a lot of progress over the last um, eight years since President Obama announced that goal, you know, we're, as Eric mentioned, we're not going to make it. So some other um, prominent foundations have set other goals, like maybe trying to reach that goal by 2025, you know. I think the most important thing here, though, is, you know, how educators can help with this goal, and that's people like you. I mean, um, you're the heart of this thing. If we can't get educators to uh, contribute to this goal, we're never going to make it, no matter what President Obama or Michelle Obama says. It's, it's just not going to be enough, you know. So, and as I've told you many, many times before, Priscilla, like, you know, you guys are the Marines. Like, the, we're, we're sort of like the Air Force, but you're like the Marines, the infantry, you know. So, um, really rely on you to get on uh, getting, getting, um, getting the job done. I think the last thing I do want to say, though, too, is like reaching that goal is, you know, it's just especially since Election Day is coming soon, you know, and Erica has talked about this before, too, but it's really hard for educators like you who are working around the clock with very limited resources, you know. The only way we're going to, we can always go lobby, Existing senators, rep- senators, congressmen, etc. But you know, if um, we don't put the right people in those positions, vote them in. You know, um, we're not going to get those changes. You're not going to get the resources you need to be successful. You know, so I think that part is also really important for us reaching this goal. What keeps you both inspired to continue with the cause? You know, I'm really inspired by, by young people. Um, and, uh, you know, last night I actually went and saw a documentary screening of a movie called, or a documentary called um, Personal Statement. And it's a documentary that PBS will be putting out soon. And it followed three extraordinary young people, uh, low income community uh, in New York, who are all applying to college and we're tracking them and their families through the process. And, you know, those young people's stories are just one example, but they were overcoming extraordinary obstacles in their personal lives. You know, one student had uh, a mother who uh, he no longer lived with who was homeless, and he was living with his sister, and, you know, he got picked for FAFSA verification and so had to figure out how to get in contact with his mother, how to get tax ID forms from his mother. You know, and I think there are so many obstacles that we're putting in front of the students who actually need the most support. And yet those students in this documentary showed extreme resolve, uh, really helping other kids in their class apply to college, working really hard. And they believe in themselves and they they believe what we're talking about, which is the power of a higher education. And so we as adults uh, need to invest in them in the same way if they're going to invest in what we're telling them works, right? If we're telling them you need a college education to be successful, then we as adults need to make it entirely possible and, and not easy but at least possible uh, for them to achieve that dream. And so um, if we're telling them that college is great and you can only be successful if you have it, and then we don't make it possible for them to achieve that dream, then we, we failed them as adults. That's the system. That's us uh, putting you know, systemic roadblocks in their way. So I'm inspired by the young people who continue to persevere. And these young people in this documentary um, were advocating for change at the state and local level and are you know, not just saying that, even though they figured it out, they're trying to make it easier for those coming behind them. So I'm, I'm inspired by young people. We'll have to check out that documentary. How about you, Don? Um, you know, uh, first, you know, I've led a very privileged life, you know, so um, you know, I, I've been very blessed with all the opportunities I've been given. So, you know, just like Eric, I'm very inspired by these students who overcome tremendous barriers, barriers I never faced, mm-hmm. you know, to accomplish incredible things, including in this documentary that we saw yesterday called per, called Personal Statement. But also, um, Priscilla, I'm inspired by you and, and Catalina, mm-hmm. you know, um, all, all the all the work that you put in it, again, like limited resources, but you guys work around the clock and it's clearly it's not about money. You yeah. do it because you love these kids and you want them to succeed, you know, um, and you inspire me. Yeah, thank you. I love my job. What keeps you guys, um, I guess you could say, what keeps you inspired to continue with uh, Michelle Obama's work? Let's change that question. How about that? Yeah, I think that, you know, the great thing is that the example that Mrs. Obama has 
shown by her leadership, right? She's a first generation college grad. Um, she had a school counselor who unfortunately killed her. She was in Princeton material, but she still was successful. And she's used her success and her platforms at the White House and now outside of the White House to still champion young people because she saw the difference education made in her life. Mm -hmm. And so I'm inspired by the fact that Mrs. Obama has been able to take her unique moment in the national conversation, not just to you know help herself, but to help so many other people because she uniquely identifies and still identifies with who she was as a first-gen college student coming up from a family that didn't have a lot of money, parents didn't go to college, middle-class family on the south side of Chicago. And because she's been willing to stay humble, to be authentic, she's inspired countless other young people who see, oh, wow, I could be that one day. I'm glad that Michelle Obama continues to support school counselors. I had a great school counselor as a first-generation college student. Um, she made me take my SAT and I had a great support system with my family and um, a lot of people helped me get a basketball scholarship to California Baptist University. So the hard work did pay off and I was able to get my college degree. So I'm really happy that Michelle Obama continues to support school counselors. Eric was talking about the song that Michelle Obama did, the rap song, Going to College, and we did it at our school because the kids love the song so much. They also wanted to add the military portion, so our kids added a military part in the video. It was comedy but educational, where they were encouraging students to apply to college or the military, and also uh, financial aid. So uh, CSAC had actually promoted the video on their website and their Facebook, so they loved the video. And we also did a Beating the Odds Summit, kind of replicating the Michelle Obama one at the White House, except our school was the mini White House. And we had a great panel. It was uh, Congressman Tacano, Catalina Cifuentes, a Marine recruiter, and a couple of our students that graduated that are now in college. So we're excited to share more information about that. Um, Don, would you like to talk about um, your favorite Michelle Obama moment? Sure, sure. I mean, there are many, but, you know, um, r really quickly, my, my favorite moment is her, you know, willingness to speak out on behalf of people who have no voice, you know, even if there's no benefit to her whatsoever, no political benefit whatsoever. So, you know, right before I joined the Reach Hire team, you know, near the end of the Obama administration, I was working um, at a federal agency that serves... Um, um, American Indian students. There are federal schools located on tribal, contr tribally controlled lands, and you know, as you, as you may know, like American Indians don't have any political power in this country. There, there are too few of them, and they're too spread out around the country, so they don't really have the ability to change, affect change just through voting. You know, they don't have any political power. Um, but anyway, you know, when I joined the retired team, I mean the very first event that she did um, uh, that I was working on with Eric. I mean, she wanted to go to a tribal school, you know. She wanted to go to the Santa Fe Indian School. And she had gone to a reservation and um, the Standing Rock Sioux Reservation um, back in 24, June 2014 with President Obama. But she was very moved by the experience, so the challenges that these kids face. I don't think she understood those challenges before that. Um, but she didn't forget them. She didn't forget these kids, you know, so um, again, this is like her second to last This is her final high school commencement speech as the first lady And for her to go to one of these reservations first first lady to go to a reservation like that um, Was tremendously moving for these kids uh, And also again, she did this because it was the right thing to do even though again There's no real political benefit for her to go there um, and that was um, shows me that she's the real thing. Yeah, we're hoping she comes out to California someday. Uh, our school really loves Michelle Obama. Our English teachers have it as a lesson to read an essay about her final speech. And then also they know who Eric Waldo is. They take uh, they take his uh, flat Stanley picture everywhere, his headshot. Um, so they know Eric. He's like a celebrity on our campus. Uh, one of our teachers has it hanging up in her room. So all the IB kids love it. So we hope that you actually get to come to our school and they get to meet you. And, um, but we love you guys and we appreciate all your hard work. If you could share uh, your favorite or your happiest moment this week, that's our Sunshine Spotlight. Yeah, so you know we had a really fun week, and again, I just want to thank you for 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 having us on the podcast. But you know, being here at NACAC has been incredible, and the Reach Hire team had some really great news this week. Um, um, among a, a tough week, um, 
and that was that we are joining the common application so we are going to move the reach hire team over to the common app they're going to host us now so we're going to continue the work of reach hire with mrs obama all that work is going to continue um, but now we're going to have a new nonprofit home uh, with the common app and that means that the work that we do inspiring young people will have some more resources and infrastructure to inspire them and connect them to the resources of the common app and helping hopefully make that college application process just a, a little bit more joyful and, and easier especially for first generation and low income students and Ultimately, you know, what we want to do is change your more lives, and I think given the millions of folks who engage with the Common App every year, it means we're going to be able to help more people um, make their post-secondary dreams come true. So that's a pretty exciting moment for us professionally, but also personally, and so we're, we're really excited about it. Yeah, I was excited to see that Michelle Obama tweeted that out today yeah. about the Common App, so you all better check it out. How about you, Don? Um, you know, again, as Eric mentioned, tough week, you know, especially with everything going on on Capitol Hill. But I, I do want to say again, it, it's been amazing for me to watch people like Dr. F uh, Dr. Ford and millions of men and women around the country, people who are just regular people, you know. These are not, they're not senators or congressmen or anything like that. And they are taking on some of the most powerful men in the world on in the Senate and, in, and the most intractable institution, the United States Congress and the federal government. And um, again, when people, it's clear to me, when people lock arms and march together and speak with one voice, even they, again, regular people, they can change the world. And you're seeing that this week. I know we still have a long way to go on that topic, but you are seeing them starting to bend over there under a tremendous pressure just from, again, regular people. I'd have to say my Sunshine Spotlight was meeting in the Dream Team today. I got to meet all the retired team, Stephanie, Josh, Angela, and then, of course, meeting up with you guys again. So I'm a big fan. I love your work, and our kids support you. They have retired everything across campus. And then also seeing Catalina Sofuentes get her award today uh, for the NACAC Inclusion and Access and Success Award. She deserves that because she does a lot of hard work behind the scenes that a lot of people don't know about, and not just for our county, but for the whole state of California, and even nationwide to go around and present about Reach Hire and Race to Submit. So thank you guys so, so much for being part of the podcast. Um, I was excited to interview. I'm a huge fan. If you could just say goodbye to everyone out there listening. Thanks again. Hey, bye, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you, Priscilla. Bye, everybody. You guys will be able to listen in to the interview that Catalina Sofuentes did at NACAC, and they showed it at the NACAC Awards. So go ahead and listen in to that. I was the first in my family to go to college, and I knew if I did not have a, someone like a teacher that helped me get to and through college, I knew I would never have made it. And I know that I must go back and I had to give back to my community, to the schools I serve, to step in and support those students that were just like me, who have parents who have ambitions and dreams for their children, but they don't know how to get there. Race to Submit was a FAFSA and California Dream Act application campaign that started in Riverside County, California. And it was in response to the fact that we had over 65% of our students qualifying for financial aid, yet only 51% of them were submitting an application. We have over 400,000 students and more than 70% of them are the first in their families to go to college. Um, we have students that don't have anyone to help them, so we must step in. And we now have the highest graduation rate in California for traditional high schools. We now have increased college enrollment by two to 3,000 students a year. And we also have one of the highest FAFSA completion rates in the state of California. When Race to Submit was launched statewide, no additional funding was given to the California Student Aid Commission to launch it. But it, it was a conversation about looking at our system and looking what the resources we do have, what could we do, and also going to the student Students and asking them what do they need. Too often we make decisions for our students instead of asking them what are their needs, what are their barriers to college and career readiness. I know in the last podcast we talked about interviewing Rancho Verde High School. Well, we will be getting them on the next episode, so be sure you tune into that next episode, episode seven. We interviewed Robin from Rancho Verde High School and Mark Lenore, who's the assistant superintendent in Val Verde, and also James. He is a school counselor at a continuation in Val Verde. They're going to share some awesome tips on financial aid and what they did in their district. So you guys will love that podcast. And also we talked about beating the odds summit. So one of our students who graduated last year was able to create a video so we'll be posting that on our social media soon so you guys could check that out and also get some tips if you ever want to do a beating the odds summit we had a lot of fun with that and so we're excited to share all that with you so tune in
Thank you for tuning in to Reach Higher Riverside. You can follow us on Twitter at RH Riverside. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel at Reach Higher Riverside. You can also subscribe to our iTunes or Google Play Music and give us a rating. Thank you so much for listening in. We appreciate all of you tuning in. And as Michelle Obama would say, when they go low, we reach higher.